We saw in the previous lessons how the efficient taxpayer can achieve a significantly higher equity return because of his tax capacity. He can utilize losses and tax credits generated by the project to offset his tax liabilities from other projects. Since inefficient taxpayer cannot use the losses and tax credits immediately and has to carry them forward, his investment return is significantly lower. Most of the renewable project developers in the United States are inefficient taxpayers. And to monetize the tax benefits generated by the wind and solar projects, tax equity structures emerged since 2005. Tax equity is essentially a structure where two parties from a partnership and one party assigns all the tax benefits of the partnership to the other party in exchange for the equity investments in the project. The party, which assigns the tax benefits to the other, is a developer and a general partner in the partnership. The party, which receives the tax benefits, is the efficient taxpayer and is a limited partner. So, who is a typical tax equity investor? Tax equity investors are large corporations that have a predictable tax liabilities. Usually, these are large financial institutions such as Citigroup, JP Morgan, and Bank of America. Remember, the tax equity investor is not interested in the renewable project itself. He invests only to take advantage of the tax benefits that the project generates. So, a typical, albeit simplified tax equity structure looks like this. We've got the partnership, which develops the renewable project, such as wind or solar. And then we've got the general partner, which invests equity in the project and receive cash benefits. And then we've got a limited partner, which invests equity as well. However, he gets only tax benefits of the partnership. We should note, that most of the renewable transactions are structured as partnerships. However, you can also structure them as limited liability companies, which will result in similar tax benefit allocations as in the case of partnerships. Let's briefly review the essentials of tax benefit allocation rules. In the U.S. partnership, we can assign the tax benefits to the other partner and retain cash benefits. This allocation is governed by the partnership agreement between the partners, in other words, it is determined by the parties themselves. This allocation of the cash and tax benefits between the parties does not have to be static. We can have a certain allocation in the early stage of the project and a different allocation when the project becomes profitable. So, the allocation of benefits can vary over time. Furthermore, this allocation of benefits does not have to be proportional to the equity investments made by the parties. In other words, we may invest only 10% of the required capital to develop the project but get 90% of the cash flow from the partnership, as long as this is what is agreed to in the partnership agreement. One example where allocation is not static is to distribute the tax benefits to the limited partner until a limited partner reaches its hurdle rate. Once the hurdle rate is reached, we can change the tax benefit allocation rules. This is referred to as yield-based flip when we flip the allocation based on the required yield achieved by the limited partner. Another example is to flip the allocation based on a certain period of time. For example, we may assign all the tax benefits to the limited partner for six years and then flip the allocation in year seven. Why do we flip in year seven? Because, as you remember, the maker's depreciation for most of the wind and solar projects ends in year six, and from year seven, the partnership has to pay taxes. This is referred to as a fixed flip. There are a set of IRS tax rules which govern the allocation of cash and tax benefits to the parties, such as tax losses allocated to the party cannot exceed his capital investment into the project. We will not cover these rules in this course, as a separate course is needed to cover all of the IRS tax rules related to renewable projects. We will soon release a financial modeling course dedicated to tax equity, where extensive coverage will be provided on the IRS tax rules relevant for renewable projects. Let's stop here, and we will continue with tax equity concepts in the next lesson.